song for you and me. With games and friends and songs and jokes and imagination, let's make it a wonderful day. Welcome to Camp Vuvu. We're going to have so much fun today. We're going to visit new places, check out sports, tell a few jokes, and all sorts of fun things. Now it's time to pick the color and letter of the day. Today's color is red. Red starts with R. If you see something red, shout it out so we can all see it. I wonder where we're visiting today. We don't know where we're going. Let's find out. Today we're visiting beautiful, historic Newport, Rhode Island. Let me show you around. Behind me is the Colony House. It's the fourth oldest state house in the country. It was built in 1739. It's at the end of Washington Square, which is the geographical center of Newport. Washington Square leads you to Thame Street. It's one of the original streets built in 1654, and it's the primary street in Newport and it houses all kinds of shops and restaurants and leads right to the waterfront. Whoa! That's right, red! Nice catch. Behind me is the Trinity Church. It was built in 1726 and it's had such famous people as George Washington and Queen Elizabeth visit there. This is Bowen's Wharf. It's called the Anchor of Newport and was built in 1760 all along the Newport waterfront. This is the beautiful Newport Harbor. It is host to docks and boats of every shape and size. You never know what you're gonna find in Newport. Behind me is St. Mary's Church. It's the oldest Catholic church in all of Rhode Island. And President and Mrs. John F. Kennedy were married here in 1953. This is the famous Old Stone Mill. It was built either in 1583 or 1680 by either the Vikings or the Portuguese. Nobody knows for sure. This is the Turo Synagogue. It's the oldest synagogue in the United States and it was built in 1759. This is the White Horse Tavern. It's the oldest operating restaurant in the United States. Newport has some of the most beautiful beaches in all of New England, right on the Atlantic coast. Right along the coast is the Cliff Walk. It was started in 1880 through 1929. Along Newport's famous Bellevue Avenue is the Tennis Hall of Fame. Also on Bellevue Avenue are the world famous Newport mansions. Some of them are the Isaac Bell House built in 1883, the Elms built in 1898, the Chateau Surmur in 1852, Rosecliff in 1899, the Marble House was built between 1888 and 1892. Belcourt Castle was built in 1891 and is currently going through some restoration. And the granddaddy of them all, the Breakers, built in 1893 to 1895 to the famous Vanderbilt family. Bellevue Avenue brings you to the Ocean Drive, which is 10 miles along the southern coast of Newport. It offers beautiful views of the Atlantic Ocean and the Atlantic coastline. Also along Ocean Drive are some beautiful mansions and homes of very famous people. It also includes the Castle Hill Inn, 
which was established in 1875 and is still in use today as an inn. It has wonderful views of the Atlantic Ocean and Narragansett Bay. Behind me is the Eisenhower House. It was used by President Dwight D. Eisenhower as a summer White House during his presidency. A little bit further down the road is Hammersmith Farm, which was built in 1887. It was the childhood home of Mrs. Jackie Kennedy. It was the summer White House for President Kennedy in 1961. At the end of Ocean Drive is Fort Adams. It was built in 1776 during the Revolutionary War as a fortress and today hosts both the Newport Jazz and Folk Festivals. What is sometimes called the gateway to Newport is the Pell Bridge. It is the longest suspension bridge in New England with its beautiful waterfront, wonderful restaurants and shops, historic buildings, and amazing ocean views. Newport, Rhode Island is one of the top vacation destinations in the entire world. If you ever get a chance, visit Newport, Rhode Island. It's beautiful and there's fun for the entire family. Well, that's it for Camp Vuvu. We'll see you next time. Bye. Baking with Chef Ella. Okay. Hi, welcome to Baking with Chef Ella. Today, I'm going to be making strawberry shortcake, and I'll be using all of these ingredients. First, we need to mix the ingredients. Five cups of flour. You need to make sure to smooth it out. Next is five teaspoons of baking powder. Next is one teaspoon of salt. And now we mix it all up. Next, I'm going to need a cup of butter. After that, I'm going to need a cup of vegetable oil. Now, I'm going to need three cups of sugar. Now I'm going to need two tablespoons of vanilla extract. Now I'm going to mix it all together until it's light and fluffy. Next, I'm going to need eight eggs, stirring them in one at a time. Now I'm going to add half of the flour mixture that we made earlier. Now I'm going to add two and a half cups of milk. Now I'm going to add the rest of the flour mixture. Now I'm going to pour our cake mixture into the pans. While our cake's in the oven, now it's time for our homemade strawberry sauce. Today we're going to be using frozen strawberries, cornstarch, sugar, and water. First we're going to use one cup of water in a big pot. Next we're going to be using three tablespoons of cornstarch. Now we're going to stir that all together. Now it's time to add our frozen strawberries. I've thawed two and a half cups and cut them into bite-sized pieces. Next, we're gonna stir in three quarter cups of sugar. Now we're gonna put it on the stove to cook for 10 minutes on medium heat. When it's done cooking and while it's cooling, we're gonna make our whipped cream frosting. First, we're going to put two teaspoons of gelatin into this three tablespoons of cold water. Now it's time to put three cups of our heavy whipping cream into our mixing bowl.
Now we're going to whip that on medium speed for 15 seconds until it's foamy. Now it's time to put our gelatin mixture in the microwave for five seconds. Now I'm going to add two teaspoons of heavy whipping cream into our gelatin mixture. That's one, there's two. Now we're gonna add two teaspoons of vanilla extract into our heavy whipping cream. And next, we're gonna add one half cup of powdered sugar into our heavy whipping cream. Now it's time to mix that up on medium speed until it forms soft peaks. Now we're going to drizzle in our gelatin mixture on low speed until they form stiff peaks. Now we're gonna start with a thin layer of frosting. Now we're going to make a thick border around the edges of the cake. Now that our strawberry sauce has cooled, we're going to scoop some of it into the middle of the cake. Now it's time to put our second layer of our cake on top. Now it's time to frost the rest of our cake. Let's start smoothing the sides. Now it's time to frost the top of the cake. It's time to add strawberries all over the top of our cake. Now it's time to pipe swirls in between our strawberries. Now we're going to add strawberry slices along the bottom of the cake. Here it is, Chef Ella's famous strawberry shortcake. If you'd like the recipe for this cake, along with all of my other recipes, you can find it on our website, campfuvu.com. Thank you all so much for helping me. See you next time. Safety Stop with Nurse April. Hi, Shkabibbity Bonk. Hi, Nurse April. How are you? I'm doing well, thanks for asking. How are you today? I'm doing great. Good. Hey, Nurse April, I've been meaning to ask you, what's that funny necklace you always wear? This? Yeah. Oh, this isn't a necklace. No? No, this is called a stethoscope. It's what doctors and nurses use to listen to your heart and your lung sounds. A st th 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 uh -huh. Stethoscope. Stethoscope. There, you've got it, great. Oh, good. You want me to show you how it works? Yes, please. Great, all right. So, the first thing you do is you put these right in your ears, like this. Oh. Next, you take this part of the stethoscope, and you put it right oh, on no, your... Oh, no, 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 that, 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 that's gonna hurt. What was that? that that's gonna hurt. Oh, shkabibbity bonk, this doesn't hurt at all. No? If anything, it might feel a little bit cold on your chest, but that's all. Hmm. Do you wanna try it on me first? Yeah, yeah okay. let's do that. Okay, so we're gonna put these in your ears, okay? Hmm. Then you're gonna take this part, and I'm gonna put it right on my heart. <gasps> wow, I can hear your heartbeat. Pretty cool, huh? Very cool. Would you like to listen to my lung sounds too? Yes. Okay, we'll go right over here. Wow, that, that's amazing. Pretty neat, huh? Yeah. Now can I try it on you? Yeah, sure. Great. You sure it doesn't hurt? Not at all. So I'm gonna put these in my ears and I'm gonna take this part, put it right up to your heart. Ella, 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 Ella. Can, can you hear anything? Ella, Ella, uh, yeah, Ella, you sound Ella. just great. Okay, bonk. great, wonderful. See, did that hurt? Not at all. Good. See, so next time you go to the doctors and he does this or she does this, there's nothing to be afraid of, right? Okay, right. There's one more thing that you might see if you go to a doctor's office. What's that? This is called a pulse oximeter, which is kind of a big word. Yeah. And what this does is this also shows you what your heart rate is and how much oxygen you're breathing. Can I have your finger? 
Okay, press this button. Wow, it's like it's, it's like it's a, it's biting me almost, but it doesn't hurt. It doesn't hurt at all, does it? Nope. Let's see. Your heart rate is perfect and your oxygen is 100%. Doesn't get any better than that, shkibibbity bonk. I'm not surprised. <laughs> <laughs> Great job today. Thanks, Nurse April. You're welcome. Thanks for the information. Anytime. That's what I'm here for. Bye. Bye-bye. Okay. Hey, Shkabib. Uh, you know my name's Shkabibity Bonk, right? Yeah, of course. Then why would you call me Shkabib? Well, I, I figured I'd just, you know, like shorten your name a little, like, like, like a nickname. Mm, no, no, I don't like that at all. How would you like it if I called you V? All right, okay. I, I won't call you Shkabib. You don't like it. Okay. N no problem. Good. Bibbity? V. Okay, all right. No nicknames. I get it. You don't like nicknames. Won't call you anything. Okay. Hi, Lou. Hi, Bonk. Hi, Ella. Did, did, did you hear that? She called me Bonk. Like, it's like she took my name and, and shortened it and made like a, um, like a nickname. Oh, my God. I love that. Bonk. But I, just to oh, I, Isn't she <sighs> wonderful? Story time with Miss Lucy. Hi guys, welcome to Story Time with Miss Lucy. Let's see what story we're going to read today. Ooh, this looks like a really good one. Jojo Saves His Friends Written by Jay Sargent and illustrated by Bruce Benedetto. Once upon a time, there was a young bottlenose dolphin with very yellow lips. His mother, Bo, named him Lemon Lips. They lived in a big family of dolphins called the Pod. The Pod traveled all around the beautiful turquoise waters surrounding the Turks and Caicos Islands. Lemon Lips loved most of all to play with all of his friends. Lemon Lips' best friends was Baby Black Tip, BB Tip. His mother Raggedy Ann named him Baby Black Tip because his dorsal was black at the very end. They would race around seeing who could swim faster and leap highest. The pod traveled many, many miles each day. One of Lemon Lips' favorite places was French K. Lemon Lips and BB Tip would swim in and out of the coral chasing each other. They especially loved the finger coral because it gave them a good scratch as they whizzed through it. Bo told him there was a very wise old dolphin named Jojo that lived inside the reef. Lemon Lips wanted very much to meet this wise dolphin. They headed out of the channel and Bo started whistling and whistling. Finally, Bo heard a familiar whistle in return and knew she'd found Jojo. Lemon Lips gave his signature whistle to be sure Jojo knew his name. They spent many days swimming together while Jojo told them lots of stories about the dolphins he had known and the adventures he had had. One day, Jojo brought the dolphins up to a boat and a swimmer with the tube in her mouth climbed into the water. She had a little machine that helped her swim through the water. Jojo was very happy to see her. He told the dolphins that they had been friends for many years and not to worry because she wouldn't try to touch them. She just wanted to be their friend. Lemon Lips got very excited to be so close to a funny swimmer. He started swimming in circles around her as fast as he could and she started circling with her little machine, thrilled to be part of the game. Early one morning, Raggedy Ann came across the reef to find Jojo. Her eyes welled up with tears as she spoke to him. Lemon Lips was filled with dread. Where was BB Tip? All the dolphins gathered around to hear what happened. Jojo told them that some very bad people had dragged BB Tip and some other dolphins out of the water and taken them away in a boat. She had chased the boat calling back until she couldn't keep up. 
Soon, all the dolphins were in tears as they looked to Jojo for help. He thought and thought of what he could do to find BB Tip and the others before it was too late. He decided to ask Turksy, the pelican, if she would fly around the island and try to find the dolphins. She agreed and set out to search for the missing dolphins. A few days later, Turksy flew over Jojo and told him the dolphins were in jail. She also said they were all very scared and crying to their families for help. All the dolphins followed Turksy to the other side of the island where they came to a big cement wall. They could hear the dolphins on the other side crying out for their mothers and friends. Lemon Lips whistled as loudly as he could to BB Tip, but he didn't hear an answer. Jojo had an idea. He swam and swam looking for the girl with the boat who loved to swim with him. He knew she would help. When he found her, he went right to the back of the boat to indicate where he wanted to go. He was headed, but the dolphins were in jail. When they got there, the girl was excited to see her dolphin friends. She found them very upset. Then she heard dolphins behind the wall crying out. She saw a group of scared dolphins swimming around in a very small pen. Now she knew why Jojo had brought her there. She had to do something to help. She decided if she got everyone she knew to march all over the island with placards saying, Free Jojo's friends. Maybe the evil people who did this to the dolphins would release them. Turksy flew overhead and told the dolphins about all the people marching around the island, waving placards up and down. She said the whole island was in an uproar. The dolphins started to get their hopes up. The next day, there were hundreds and hundreds of people all lined up at the jail. A jail guard came out, and to the cheers of all the people, he opened the gate in the cement wall and all the dolphins swam out. They leapt in the air, showing how happy they were to be free. They all swam over to Jojo to thank him for all he had done. Lemon Lips and Raggedy Ann swam frantically around looking for BB Tip. He was the last dolphin to swim out of the gate. All the dolphins swam off, so very happy to be together again. Jojo, the wise dolphin, had saved them from captivity. The end. Sports Bird. With Jake. Hey guys, welcome to Sports Break with Jake. Today I'm going to be showing you how to hold and swing a golf club. Check it out. So, to start this off, the proper stance of holding a golf club is you want to have both of your feet just like this. This is for a righty. It goes, so this club is a righty, and it's the same way as a lefty, like, just like this, for a lefty. So the way you want to hold it is you want to put your left hand in the back, right hand in the front for a righty, the opposite for a lefty. And when you're swinging, you want to make sure the top of the club is lined up with the front of your front foot. And when you're swing, so you have the grip, and when you're about to swing, you go like this, wind it all the way back until like right about right here, close to your shoulder, and you go up for the swing. This is the, one of the key tips. Look at the golf ball the whole time while you're doing this. So you start off, get the grip, bend your knees a little bit, go like this, looking at the ball the whole time. Right when you're about to swing, see this back foot. Watch this back foot in motion. See, it tilts a little bit to get a lot of power with your swing. So watch this foot when I do this. It's tilting. And that, that lets me get more power when I'm doing a swing. And when I finish my swing, I want to go all the way back, just like this. That is how you swing and hold a golf club. Here's what it looks like in real time. Hey guys, thanks for joining Sports Break with Jake. See you next time. Sports Break with Jake. R. R is the letter, the letter of the day. R is the letter of the 
today. It's for red and ram and rose and rug and road and all sorts of other things. R is the letter. R is the letter. R is the letter of the day. R. A few moments with Harper. Hi, Harper. Hi. How you doing? Good. So, how was your day? Good. But there was this one kid who people kept picking on. Really? Yeah. Kind of like bullying? Mm hmm Oh, my goodness. And uh, what happened? He was different and people didn't... He, a lot of people were all the same, kind of, and they just didn't like it that he wasn't. Oh, so what did you do? I, I stopped them from bullying them. You did? How did yeah. you do that? I stood up for him. Tell me how you did that. So I went up to him and I said, how would you like it if somebody was picking on you? You should treat others the way you want to be treated. That's fantastic. That is wonderful advice. So they stopped bullying the kid. Yeah. So the, the kid must have been very happy. Mm -hmm. And that must have made you very happy. Yeah. I'm very proud of you. That was a very good thing to do. That's how you should treat bullies. Just make them feel like, hey, how would you like it if somebody was bullying you? Yeah. That's a good thing you did, Harper. Wonderful. Hey, Harper? Yeah. Hey, Harper? Yeah. I love you. I love you, too. It's joke time! Why is it really hot in a stadium after a football game? All the fans have left! <laughs> Why did the bee get married? Because she loved her honey. <laughs> Why did the tomato turn red? Saw the salad dressing. <laughs> what did one flag say to the other flag? Nothing. It just waved. <laughs> what do you get when you stack a bunch of pizzas? The Leaning Tower of Pizza. <laughs> <laughs> Planting with Pam. Hi, welcome to another edition of Planting with Pam. Today we're going to take this little sunroom and turn it into a beautiful garden. What I did this morning was I went to a nursery, chose the plants that I think would be perfect in here, saved all the tags so I know the name of the plant and the best place to put them for the sun and the shade throughout the day. So, the next time you see it, it'll be a gorgeous room. Hi, and welcome back to Planting with Pam. As you can see, we took this space and turned it into a beautiful little garden. We added some artwork, flowers, little things we've collected along the way, so let me show you around. The first thing we did was we got this little table and chairs to look like a little cafe. Some of the artwork here from my granddaughter Harper, she painted for me a beautiful little fish, a little turtle down there, so I thought that'd be a nice addition. Another thing I added was this beautiful little fountain. It drips water all day long and it makes it sound like a little brook in the background. Beautiful soundtrack for this room. And over here, I found this wire hamper in an old flea market and I thought, what a nice plant stand this would make. So I chose a plant over here that gets a lot of shade. I put a little angel down there, bought this at an old antique store with a lantern because I had a picture that I took a long time ago of a shutter that I thought would go nicely there. And so this makes a nice little area with some artwork and some plants. And over here we had a potter's bench. It was natural wood, but I thought for this room it would look better white. So we painted it white. We put some plants that don't need too, too much direct sun. And then I put some little touches here. This rock my granddaughter Ella painted. This is my happy place, so my sister got me that sign. 
And then you can go and you can pick things up. For example, these shells over here look like angel wings, so I thought that would be nice to put near the angels. I put my grandmother's old coat rack and put some baskets on it. I used to make baskets a long time ago, so that would be a nice place to display baskets next to the lemon tree. And then down here, I found this old lobster pot on the side of the road in Maine. So I thought that'd be a nice place to put some plants and a little angel there. This piece right there, I also found in a, a flea market. It's just a bunch of wood, and I thought that'd be pretty around the plants. And one day I was walking down a side road near the beach and found this old piece of bark that fell off of a tree. So I thought that'd be kind of pretty around the pot, kind of hides the pot a little bit with that pot of flowers. So as you can see, you can take an empty room and with a little bit of effort and creativity, finding things along the way, whether in flea markets or on the side of the road or at a beach, you can make a beautiful little garden out of it. So I hope this inspires you to make your own little indoor garden. Well, that's it from Planting with Pam. So until next time, bye-bye. for joining us. Hope you had a good time. We sure did. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe below so you never miss an episode. And check out campvuvu.com. That's it for now. Bye! Bye. Let's make it a wonderful day today. Let's make it fun for you and me.